Greetings 94th, uh, this is Beaker12, and uh, after a very long absence from War Thunder, I'm back, and uh, what I'm doing here is doing a long range engine out recovery video. Um, this is basically just an add on to the ELP or emergency landing pattern videos uh, that I shot before. This is the more practical aspect of what actually happened in a fight. Um, so, for your information, this is all in arcade. Uh, I've been uh, trying to get some practice in because I've not played in a very long time, and uh, basically, um, in my uh, DO217 I have a dual engine failure, both engines fail, and uh, I managed to glide back to a straight in approach uh, for recovery at the base. So we'll go over just a couple of uh, basic things here. Uh, the EOP video and all that stuff will be attached in the comments below uh, for guys who want to see uh, more academic slash practical crap about it. Uh, but what we're going to go over is uh, we're going to go in um, to the indications of like engine failure and things like that, what you can do about them if anything. Uh, I'm going to talk about the bold face or the critical action procedures that you'll do immediately when you realize you have an engine failure. Um, as soon as the sooner you do it, the better off you will be. Uh, and then uh, when to deploy your gear and flaps and things like that. Um, so if you guys know anything about aviation, um, which I'm sure you all do playing this game, um, extra drag and stuff um, based on gear and flap settings and and uh, engine yeah all that stuff is pretty basic for you guys so in terms of the indications of, of an engine failure you're gonna hear uh, engine roughness uh, in the game possibly uh, I have all my temperatures up on the upper left hand uh, side there of my HUD so I've got all my oil my engine temperatures my water temperatures uh, you don't have to have those it's kind of a lot uh, but uh, I keep an eye on it in case I'm playing like historical and stuff like that where if you run the engine too hard you can have an engine failure even if you're not being shot at so basically uh, to prevent that you know you're gonna give the engine a break and stuff obviously uh, fall back a little bit but you know, a lot of them, the indications are going to be numerical. They're all going to be temperature related, or they're going to be some type of, you know, engine roughness that you hear. Anyway, so in terms of a fire, uh, obviously engine fire is something blazing, you know, in front of your face where the engine is obviously caught fire. It's burning all that fuel and oil and everything that's going to continue to spread to the plane. Now, uh, what I do in case of a fire is if I'm not actively engaged in a fight or if I'm uh, within gliding distance of the base, I will turn off the engine. Uh, I have the engine's hotkey to my I button, and basically I can turn the engines on and off uh, at will and uh, save the aircraft a little bit of uh, extra trouble. You, you don't want to have an active burning fire on your airplane if you can help it. Um, it also might save some of the fuel, so if you have say this dual engine aircraft uh, right here if engine one is burning but engine two is fine turn off engine one and save the fuel for the for the good one smoke um, I'm gonna tell you a little quick story buddy was playing uh, with me the other day he got like a single shot to the engine block or something and uh, he was starting to trail thin black smoke not a big deal he managed to fly with us for another couple minutes until his engine seized after the oil all burned up and he crashed in the middle of nowhere so yeah, even if you're just trailing just a little bit of black smoke or something like that, it doesn't seem like it's a big deal. Uh, if you're not actively engaged or something, I would go home. Um, basically, because what happened to him is his engine failed after a while because the oil burned up or the oil uh, temperature rose. Once the oil temperature rises, you don't have any mu as much oil because it's burning all that. Engine stops. Pretty basic. So those are the couple of the indications: uh, engine roughness, fire. Uh, you know, you're trailing some type of smoke or something, and your temperatures go crazy. So we'll go right into this. Um, and basically, uh, like I said here, this is me flying after it's been a while. So, but uh, I managed to do a successful long-range engine out recovery, uh, which is something I didn't think I was going to be able to do when it when it happened. So we'll, um, just go ahead and work with me here. Uh, some of the uh, replay settings in terms of the cameras and all that are kind of a pain in the butt. Uh, but I'm going to walk you through the basic steps here. In terms of your bold face, your critical action procedures, here's what you're going to do in order. Glide, establish, landing site, selected, and turn to the nearest airfield immediately. Uh, those are your three steps, basically. So, um, yeah, I'm engaging a, a 20 sweet. Anyway, 
your glide is going to be best on uh, based on your best glide speed for the airframe, which is going to be hard because we fly different airplanes all all the time. And I'll talk a little bit about trying to set that up properly. <laughs> all right, already trailing black smoke from engine number one. Not good. Anyway, in terms of the gliding, which I'll get into as well, the glide I established was 120 to 130 miles per hour. Uh, it's usually a specific number, but um, like I said, we don't know these, so you're going to have to kind of fly by seat your pants, if you will, a little bit. Engine 2 is now smoking. I managed to get a few hits. And then you'll see the engine failures. Okay, engine 1 dies. And then engine 2 dies. Alright, so we're immediately going to go into our bold face. Uh, it's going to be glide establish. So I'm establishing my glide right now. Uh, landing side select. We're going to try to make it home. And turn to the nearest airfield. Alright, so it looks like on the map it's right uh, past these mountains. So I actually had to kind of th uh, thread the needle a little bit and uh, fly between these two mountains here, which was kind of a pain. Um, so yeah, basically, all that stuff has been set up. Uh, we did our glide established. I'm doing 125 uh, miles an hour right now. Slanty side has been selected for the base, and I've already turned uh, to the direction of the airfield. So now, all that's pretty much been taken care of at this point. Now we have to worry about making the airfield, making sure we don't get slow. Because um, even if you're off the like, best glide speed by one or two knots, it's going to greatly affect your glide range. And also now we've got the problem of when are we going to deploy our gear and flaps. Um, most aircraft, I'm kind of being general here, have a 2 to 1 glide ratio. Um, they can glide 2 nautical miles for every 1,000 feet of altitude that they lose. I'm assuming this is roughly the same. Landing site is in. Uh, landing site is in sight right now, so that's good. And then, um, yeah, so it's got a two to um, two to one glide ratio. Uh, usually, when you deploy your gear, it's a lot less than that at that point. Um, extra drag and whatnot for you. So when landing is assured, uh, because you have no engine power to help support you, that's when you want to deploy your gear and flaps. So it looks like we're getting to that point a little bit. I'm trying to turn, I've got airframe damage. Looks like I'm uh, getting ready to deploy the gear. Yep, landing side I'd say would, uh, or we will definitely make the landing, it is assured. So I've deployed all that. Yeah, it looks like we're going to make that landing pretty good. And there you have it. Um, nice successful recovery at the base. Uh, from quite a ways away and uh, was able to make a successful recovery for a repair. Uh, the match ended before I could get up in the air again, but uh, basically I was able to make it home after doing some damage to an A-20. Um, so some of the things that we talked about here were basically just your bold face uh, or your critical action procedures. You're going to establish your glide, you're going to find your landing site, and then you're going to go to your landing site. You want to keep an eye on your speed, making sure you're not too fast or too slow. Try to find just a nice, calm glide speed, kind of like what you saw here. And uh, that'll help preserve your altitude and you'll be able to fly great distances. And then uh, as well, uh, we talked about setting a glide speed. It's kind of up to you guys, um, considering there are no published ones for the game or anything like that and then deploying your gear and your flaps as soon as landing is assured. Uh, lucky for me I was able to make this recovery because well I was in good guy land uh, I had all my friendlies around me so uh, I wasn't actively being engaged which was good. Um, you won't always have that issue. Um, but basically we also talked about some indications fire, smoke, oil, all these type of things that could go wrong and how to uh, successfully handle this uh, emergency. Alright, um, if you guys have any questions, post them in the comments below. I'm going to go ahead and attach my ELP videos uh, as well. And there's other uh, in-game references on how I successfully done or non-successfully done recoveries. Uh, but keep this in mind. This is just as important as shooting the bad guys. So 
Uh, this is Beaker12 signing off. Thank you.